When we started to excavate this, we started in uh, actually right here, right in front of this board, was where that initial test unit had been that found all that stuff. And you can see a, a bit of what's left of a dirt stairway that was there so that archaeologists could come in and look at the stratigraphy. That's what that little ramp is underneath there. Uh, and in excavating over here, we had found beer cans and cigarette wrappers and the usual suspect. There's a whole bunch of beer cans right behind this wall. So we started digging right where this stairway is here. And because we found beer cans and cigarette wrappers, we started shearing off the top meter and just taking it out, pick and shovel and wheelbarrow. It was all mixed stuff, doesn't do us any good. But when we got out about here, we stopped doing that because we started running into a lot of artifacts and they were all in the right order. And cursor inefficiency, the litters and the faded diggers had never dug in this particular area. And they say cursor inefficiency because of course I'm interested in the stuff down here, but I'm responsible for all archaeology to the surface. The record is held by the unit in that corner, that one meter one right in that corner, in one 10 centimeter level, so that's roughly four inches. There were 16,329 flakes. Every one larger than a quarter, they record its exact place on the earth. They write out a Tyvek tag with a permanent marker that has all that information on it. They write the same information on the outside of a plastic bag. They map it on, write it, all that information on their clipboard. They take a picture of it. Then they remove that flake and put it in the bag. 16,000 times. It took them two and a half months to dig four inches. So, like I said, we, we really rib our archaic guys a lot because the stuff up there, and you can look at those walls, they are covered in stuff. I go up here. I mean, anything that's not falling out is in the next unit over. So, you know, there's a tool there. I mean, we've got a lot of burn rock in here and a lot of shell hash. Um, I know there's a projectile point right up here somewhere. Oh, and it just fell out. So, yeah. So there's, you see all these flakes and all this stuff in here that's all chert. When we started digging this, this is about 8,000 years old up here. This tier, where I'm standing, is about 12,000 years old. You can see, because we had archaeologists back, that we put some labels there to kind of show you where Clovis and older than Clovis is. Down there as we went down. You can see the Comanche Peak uh, limestone at the bottom. The uh, we have a spring head for those of you guys over there. You can see a spring right here. You see the spring throat as it's bubbling. And there's another one right behind you in that corner that's bubbling out like crazy. Of course, there's springs everywhere here. So lots of water here. And those pumps are the only thing that keep us from going underwater. You can see the Comanche Peak bedrock as it looks under the platform here on this picture. And these grooves here give us some data too. This is the outer corner of Buttermilk Creek. Buttermilk Creek is coming across here. It came right here for some length of time. So you have these very deep grooves. It was here for quite some time, but not as long. And you see shallower grooves that go diagonally. And then it was up here in this corner for just a little while, going about here. And so the creek came up across the pasture here and turned around. There is a point bar that you can see over here. If you see the gravel and stones there. And people were living on that point bar, and they were butchering, again, the extinct horse. We had a lot of uh, horse here, including some attack mandibles and a lot of teeth and everything. Um, lots of tools from down there, tools we haven't seen before. Again, here we have some posters. Clovis is on the left of each of these posters, OTC on the right. We have uh, flight technologies here. And you can see, like, Gravers are pretty similar, awls and so on are pretty similar, though they're getting to them slightly in a, in a different fashion. They're getting to that end result a different way. Um, blade technologies are very similar. Blade technology doesn't seem to have changed much. So blade technology is older and continues. There's some differences, but not a lot of them. Um, they seem to have a similar way of getting about Biofacial technologies are completely different. They're getting to them in a completely different way, and the tools end up quite different. This is a Clovis knife, would have been a hafted knife. This is an older than Clovis knife. It's a little thing with even cortex on the end of it. We first uncovered the tip of it. We thought it was a projectile point, started falling down, said, what the hell is this? Some of these tools we've never seen before. Nobody else makes tools like that. The weirdest ones, of course, 
are the ones at the bottom here on our lovely eye chart, V, W, and X. Um, these are stereotypical Clovis points. What the hell are these? If I found those anywhere, I'd say knee-jerk reaction be arrowhead. These are only, well, these things are less than two centimeters long, so these things are three-quarters of an inch to an inch long. Um, these ones, these two bases could be part of well, we have one like called a fishtail that's a paleo Indian point nearly contemporaneous with uh, Clovis in South America, and it has a very small base and then a big flaring blade, but this one's got shoulders and actually starts tapering, so that's not it either. These guys have bone arrows and antlatals, and then nobody used the bone arrow for a long time here. These are unlike any arrowhead in Texas. No one's ever seen anything like them or the manufacturing technique, so I don't if that's going to be the most fun to describe. We're uh, working on a monograph that's expected to be done next fall, so probably be published in 2016. And some of these are really thorny questions that we're going to have to answer. And some of them we're not going to be able to answer. We're going to just throw it up there and say, here's the data we got. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best guess right now? They've got some kind of technology that's a hell of a lot smaller than that level. You can't put that on an that level. It's too small to drown. Mm. Hmm. Whether it's bow and arrow, the problem is I don't have the tips. The tips would tell me a lot. Mm -hmm. It would tell me if they had high velocity when they were used, or if this is some kind of smaller dart or something. I don't know. One of the things we can tell you is this stuff is all found in place. You can see our dates there all fall into place. If you look at that one, those are kind of, for the archaeologists, we put them out there. But see the one with the yellow dots over there? Those little yellow dots are teeny tiny flakes smaller than my little fingernail that are used for manufacturing what's known as the Andice Point. It's a point that was defined from this site, from a collection. An Andice Point is a big thing, a little smaller than my hand. And at the bottom of it, it's got two narrow grooves that go all the way up inside this point, very long. Only an expert can make it. They're very, very difficult. The Andice is found, you can see the sign up there, way up in there. And uh, it's an early arcade point. And those little flakes that you get for making those grooves are very distinctive. And if you look at them, they're all on a surface there. They're all laying there. The argument has been in the past, and for one of the sites nearby, the lower edge of the Galt site has already been published. It's called the Debrel Friedkin site. It's 300 yards that way by A&M, and they got really hammered on this one. They said, well, those soils out there are vertisolic clays, and that's what you get these big cracks in. And they said, what happens is you get those big cracks and artifacts fall down in those cracks. But what we find is when there's an artifact in that clay, and you get those cracks, the artifact goes with the clay. It doesn't fall down the cracks. That's what that proves. Those things are sitting on a surface, and they had the same cracks in their surface, and they didn't fall down. They aren't descending down through it. So there's no movement this way. We have a number of evidences like that that shows these are sealed contents. Now, when you think about it, it's bad enough when I talk about all those flakes up there. But remember when we talked about microscopic use wear? And we do that high power microscopy and everything? Well, that means I can't use metal near the stone tools. I can't even use our favorite mesa trowel because if I do under the microscope, you just see a big silver streak from steel. So, most of this hole was dug with bamboo splinters and chopsticks. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I had one of our Galt School members uh, send me a uh, Every winter when we ask them to renew their membership, he sent me a nice note and said, uh, I've been reading your newsletter for several years, and I decided not to renew this year because uh, all you're doing is, and I quote, an education crap. Oh. <laughs> uh, my staff says I got up and walked around the lab for a long time counting very slowly. But I sent him a, a fairly long email, and I, and I pointed out that, first of all, we're about getting usable information about human behavior. If I dig the rest of my life and I don't publish it and I don't give it to the public, whether it's school groups or tours or, or you know, the newspaper or Scientific American Frontiers, then I've wasted my life because it's about giving you guys usable information. That said, he might have noticed if he'd been reading his newsletter very carefully that we had dug 18 cubic meters of soil that year with chopsticks. And outside of a prison escape movie, I've never heard anyone move in that kind of dirt. So he was welcome to join any time. He never did volunteer, but he very quietly sent me a check. So I think he got the point, yeah, that we weren't just doing that. 